David Brewster here with another Three for All, and this is three Ingve Malmsteen licks from 1984. And Ingve, of course, is a guitar legend, you know, a pioneer of neoclassical metal. And I featured him in a chord play episode, uh, you know, last year. I also featured him in a Breaking Chords, you know, kind of an arpeggio focus lesson. And there's a lot you can learn from Ingve Malmsteen. And he definitely has this kind of, you know, notorious uh, kind of ego and kind of a bad you know reputation uh, with certain you know musicians and certain players and people but there's no question i mean Ingve has you know great technique great tone and he's just i don't know his vibrato his phrasing his music you know everything about him it's really interesting and definitely i mean he's influenced millions of guitarists you know whether they're rock hard rock metal and I've even talked to classical violinists that respected Malmsteen. So in this lesson, we're going to focus on his early years, you know, back when he was playing with Alcatraz, you know, Graham Bonnet's old band. And before that, he was actually in a band called Steeler with uh, Ron Keel. And after he left, you know, Steeler, he joined Alcatraz. Of course, Ron Keel formed the band Keel. And, uh, and Yngwie was kind of off and running, you know, kind of starting his career and kind of charting his course, you know, for where he was going to move next. And he did, you know, record a studio album with Steeler. He recorded a studio album with Alcatraz and a live album with Alcatraz. And this would have been right around that period before he left and uh, released, you know, recorded and released Rising Force. So this is kind of his early years. I'm such a big Malmsteen fan, I actually had a lesson in Guitar Player Magazine, uh, Moves Like Malmsteen, which would have been the August 2016 issue. And I was honored, you know, to be in Guitar Player Magazine again, which I've been writing for them, you know, the last five years. But uh, I was really proud of that lesson. It made the teenage me, you know, inside of me very proud. Like, hey, you just wrote a Malmsteen lesson. And it turned out really good. So uh, it's called Moves Like Malmsteen, and it definitely helps with... Uh, position shifting and alternate picking and kind of helps you get used to some of those just rapid and wicked, uh, you know, scale-based ideas from Yngwie. So we're going to look at some terrifying licks and, you know, I mean, it's Yngwie, of course, it's, it's shredding. But uh, what we're going to do, I'm definitely going to demonstrate these licks, you know, at speed or at a shred, you know, tempo, but I'm going to slow everything down. So I can really help those that are watching this kind of see, you know, some of the movements and techniques and some of the things that you really need to focus on to get to that level. Because, you know, I definitely don't want to just, you know, blast, you know, a bunch of shredding and say, haha, you know, that's all folks or whatever. I want to actually help those that are out there watching to kind of understand how they can start to kind of push, you know, their speed and their technique into into faster and faster, you know, tempos. And it's a process, you know, it's going to take time. It's not something you're going to do one day and then the next day you're shredding. You know, this is something you're going to build and practice and refine for years. But it's really good to kind of challenge yourself and kind of push yourself like this. So we're going to shred through some of, some of this stuff. You know, I'm going to demonstrate it, you know, at a faster tempo. But I'm going to slow everything way down so we can actually see, you know, what's going on here. First lick from this live footage is this blistering A harmonic minor run. And he's doing, you know, fast picking. It's kind of sequenced in uh, A harmonic minor. And before we jump into the lick itself, which is pretty terrifying, I want to show you actually what he's kind of doing. So we're going to start playing this really slow. And I want to share, you know, kind of the, the concept of where he's generating these notes and kind of you know, put this lick together. So, you know, A harmonic minor, there's actually a pattern. I talked about this before, actually, in the harmonic minor mastery, you know, in the scales and tails lesson. But the shape that he's kind of, you know, playing out of for this, it's a six note, um, you know, scale fingering, and we're missing the third. So it's A harmonic minor with no third, and that would look like this. <laughs> see we've got B, A, and G sharp right there on the high E string, and then F, E, and D on the B string, and then we're going to basically do the same thing an octave lower. Now that 
that's not the lick from this video. That's just kind of the scale or the, uh, the fingering idea that Ingbe was kind of using. So slowly, the lick from the video looks like this. <laughs> hear it faster, here it is kind of at shred tempo. So that's pretty terrifying, you know, at tempo. So let's make sure we're going slow and I want to kind of share, you know, what you need to practice and what you should work on. So we're doing two sets, you know, like two three note sets of notes, but we're creating a six note pattern like this. So we're starting with that D, E, and F on the B string and doing this pattern. Right? One, two, three, four, five, six. And then you repeat that. So the first thing I would do is just practice that. Like, don't even worry about the rest of the lick at first. Just practice that first three note group, you know, that creates that six note phrase. And then jump to the high E string and do the same thing with the G sharp A and B. And you're doing that same pattern, but it, you know, a different fingering. So the first thing I would do after you get used to the two shapes individually, then combine them together and just go back and forth and go slow. Now, once you start to get a feel for it, you can actually start to kind of flesh out the rest of the lick, which is this. And there you can see we did two sets of each, you know, string group, and then we did one set, and then at the end he does... So there he's reaching up and he's grabbing that C, which is the missing, you know, third, the minor third there. So that's interesting because you're kind of going up an extra fret while maintaining that other pattern. And then just bend that C note up to D at the end. Something like this. Alright, the next lick from this live footage kind of blurs the line between Aeolian and Harmonic Minor, and we're still in the key of A, or A minor, but occasionally you'll see a G natural, and occasionally you'll see G sharp, and that's the seventh, you know, in A minor. And the G natural would be Aeolian, and the G sharp would kind of trigger, you know, Harmonic Minor. And uh, it looks something like this, and at the end he's kind of doing some bar dips, so if you have a bar, feel free to, you know, dip them. And he's also kind of grabbing these inversions of chords. There's like a, you know, a G inversion, you know, like a G over B, and then an E inversion, you know, an E over uh, G sharp. And um, he did that a lot, especially like around, you know, those early albums, you know, Rising Force, Marching Out, and Trilogy. And I really like that sound, too. It's cool to hear a mix of scales and kind of partial chords of those chord inversions. Something like this. <laughs> You know, really cool. So slowly... And you can see there he's kind of going up. And he kind of starts with that A, B, and then immediately bends, you know, C up to a D. And then he comes down. And then right there when he grabs that B note, he goes up, you know, B, C to D. And then grabs that B. And I really like that part of it too. that G, you know, over B, and the E over G sharp right there. The 
next lick from this live solo, it's really crafty, and he's basically outlining a uh, chord progression, and he's tapping, and he's also kind of doing these open open string kind of hammer on some pull offs in there too. So Ingbe is definitely one of those you know just masterful guitarists where he packs so much into you know his licks and phrases, whether he's sweeping or picking, tapping, and even his rhythm work is really you know interesting the way he kind of dances around and, and grabs different things. So it starts and he's basically doing this open string pull off and he's you know kind of channeling E minor and then he implies you know B major which once again is kind of signaling harmonic minor and Ingbe loves harmonic minor of course but we've got E minor and then B major and then it's going to change to A minor 7 implied and then finishes again with E minor. So it's creating this chord progression but you're tapping, something like this. And a little bit slower, you can actually hear the progression. So one more time there, you're basically grabbing, you know, the open B, or I'm sorry, the open high E, and then you're going to grab this B note, grab the E note, and then tap G right there on the 15th fret. And that's basically the pattern right there. And then basically move that E back to that D sharp, and then you're going to tap the 14th fret there to grab that F sharp. And you've got B major. And he only does that B once, and then after that he's going to move back and grab A and C on the high E string, and he goes back and starts tapping that G note, which that would be, you know, implying A minor 7. Because there's your, you know, open E, A, C, and G, which would be the flat 7, which is creating, you know, A minor 7. And then, you're going to basically do the open E, G, B, and tap that G again, and that's back to E minor. Here's a bonus lick from this live footage, and it's a sweet pick to A diminished idea, and he's kind of traveling along, you know, what I've nicknamed Ingbe's Highway. And in the Ingbe Malmstein Breaking Chords episode I made, I kind of talked about, you know, Ingbe's Highway and kind of mapped out, you know, A diminished uh, arpeggios. But uh, here, we're basically starting, you know, very high on the fretboard, and then he's cruising down, um, you know, kind of connecting these A diminished arpeggios, diminished seventh, technically. And uh, at, at tempo, it sounds and looks something like this. So let's slow everything way down, and I'm going to show you where the sweeps are and kind of how to connect this phrase, because it's really fast, and this is definitely a signature, you know, Malmsteen lick. But let's not worry about the speed at first. Let's worry about what you're actually physically playing. And then you can start kind of creeping up the tempo and get faster. So really slowly, we're doing this. And there you can see we're starting this phrase with this kind of motif or a melodic figure. And then right there is where you're going to sweep and you're basically hitting, you know, E flat, uh, G flat, and A. And that's where the sweep is. And then what you're going to do is basically mimic that pattern, but then go down a minor third. You know, go down three frets. And then do the same thing right here. Go down another minor third and do the same thing again. Go down another minor third. Now shift up a minor third, go back down a minor third, and then go down one more minor third and end on E flat. So slowly. And it's the 
the combination of the pull off and the sweep that's going to kind of set up you know your your hands and your fingers to play that lick because he's not sweeping everything he's only really doing a downstroke sweep you know kind of moving through um that three note pattern on three different strings you know that let's go do that one more time kind of slower <laughs> The secret there is really just keep it very controlled and precise and try to keep the movements you know from both hands you know very smooth don't tense up you know and don't hold your breath you know when you're trying to play it just relax and try to really smoothly you know work through that pattern and that's really going to be difficult but you can slowly kind of creep up the tempo and go faster over you know a period of time so just you know make sure you're playing everything very clean and efficient and definitely start slow and then you can start pushing yourself almost like you're stepping on the gas but you really gradually want to step on that gas you don't want to just floor it you know um, take your time and kind of you know smooth that whole thing out one more time here <laughs> and you can slowly you know kind of get a little faster and a little faster as you practice that That's going to wrap this look at three Ingve Malmsteen licks from 1984. And definitely, you know, I'm a big Malmsteen fan. You know, I found him when I was younger and I was already obsessed with, you know, Eddie Van Halen. And then when I heard Ingve, I mean, my jaw hit the floor. I'd never heard anything that fast or accurate or articulate in my whole life. I just thought that's a guitar, you know, and oh my gosh, you know, I was blown away. And that definitely put a fire under my butt to really boost my technique and, and try, you know, exotic scales. I kind of got a little bit into sweet picking and kind of learned, you know, some different techniques from Ingve. And uh, regardless of your personal, you know, feelings or take on Ingve, he's a master. I mean, he really is a, a virtuoso. He created, you know, a new direction and style for electric guitar that had never been heard before. And I know a lot of people that are Randy fans, you know, Randy Rhodes, they tend to kind of throw rocks at Ingbe, so to speak. But, um, but they were obviously both influenced by classical music, but Randy was more influenced by classical guitar music, whereas Ingbe was more influenced by classical violin music, Paganini, Bach, Vivaldi, and people like that. So their interest and approach of classical was different, you know, stylistically different. So I don't really compare either one of them. I mean, Randy Rhodes is a legend. He's very important, you know, electric guitarist. Ingve Malmsteen is a legend and a very important electric guitarist. So I kind of keep them separate, even though some people want to lump them together or it's almost like a competition. And it's like, no, that's, that's comparing two completely different people that had two different completely, uh, you know, directions or musical paths. So uh, I respect Ingve, and I know there's a lot of people out there that don't, but whatever. I mean, he definitely changed the electric guitar and influenced, you know, everyone that was on the scene when he was on the scene and everybody after him, too. I mean, all the rock, hard rock and metal and shred, you know, guitarists that you hear and, and notice, um, more than likely they were influenced by Ingve at least a little bit, if not a lot of it. So uh, anyway, leave some feedback and some comments. Please subscribe to Late Night Lessons, and I'll be back before you know with more content and material. Thank you.